What is going on everybody? Hope you guys are doing super well today. Welcome into episode 21 of Ball Boy Talk. Monday, no February 16th. No clue why I thought that it was um, November for a second there, but that's all right. Um, before we jump into it today, I just want to let you guys know about Anchor. Anchor Podcast, it's an amazing platform. It's what I used to record Ball Boy Talk. It's free. It's easy to use. Uh, you can put paid sponsorships with any audience. You can add drops. You can add music. You can really do so many different things with Anchor. Um, it also releases your podcast onto different stream platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Breaker, Pocket Cast, and a couple more on top of that even. Uh, Anchor, highly, highly recommend it if you aren't using it already. Jump in, start using it today. Welcome in officially to Ball Boy Talk today. Again, episode 21. On episode 21 today, we got a bunch of stuff we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk some news. We're going to talk some fantasy baseball. Yes, it's that wonderful time of year today that we get to start talking about fantasy baseball. If you've been following the blog, I've been post posted three positions so far. Outfielders, third basemen, and shortstops. I projected my top 15 for every position. Uh, so you know exactly who you should be targeting in your drafts and where to target them. Um, and when it comes to the draft season in about a month or so, about second, third week of March, um, I will be giving you guys all my fantasy tips and tricks um, in its own episode, some recap of draftees, things like that. So stay tuned for that um, and make sure you read these if you want to take advice from a 12-year fantasy baseball vet. Um, and lastly, we're going to round it out with a present and future series. Uh, this series is something I worked on, did it last year, did it again this year. Uh, it's a big hit with a lot of the fans, and so I wanted to make it into an audio platform uh, just to give it a different perspective as well and to add on more onto that. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the AL West today, my favorite division in baseball, of course, because it holds my beloved Seattle Mariners. Uh, so without any further ado, let's jump into some of the news. So some of the news that we, we saw this last week, just to recap, the health and safety protocols were announced by the MLB. Uh, there's going to be strict enforcement for unsportsmanlike conduct. There's going to be new things for COVID. Um, if a team does have a COVID outbreak, the team will be able to add players to MLB roster, return them to the minors without burning their options or placing them on waivers. There's also going to be a health and safety committee. There's going to be um, infection control prevention coordinators. There's going to be, um, for, for players who contact Trace, they're going to be wearing the Conixion devices worn at all times, so you'll be seeing those on the players. And then um, any player who's in contact or test positive will have a seven-day quarantine and will have to test, test negative on the fifth day of that. Uh, so if you read through the, the notes um, down in the podcast or on YouTube if you're listening there, uh, you can see the full workup. You just click the Around the Horn post and go from there. And you'll be able to see the full breakdown as well. You see the full press release from the MLB. A couple other things that are super important to talk about. You're going to see seven inning double headers again with the runner starting on second base. You're going to see uh, rosters go back down to 26 players from the 28 players that they were at last year. You're going to see still the five-man taxi squad with one of them having to be a catcher still. Um, you're going to see no universal DH. You're going to see a 10-team playoff format, so back to normal. Um, you know, we'll, this could be the last season that we see pitchers hitting. Uh, I was honestly hoping it was last, the 2019 season, but we'll see it again this year. Um, and then lastly, we're also going to see a new ball. So basically to explain the new ball... You know, if you haven't already read about it or you're a little confused by it, I'm going to simply break it down for you. Basically what they did is they took the core, they made it a little bit lighter. Uh, it's not juiced anymore, quote unquote. Um, so it's helping to increase consistency. Basically, engineers said that it's going to be basically like adding five feet of wall to every part. Uh, that's going to be the big difference. We'll see how it plays out in spring training, how pitchers adjust to it. We might not see 104 mile an hour fastballs anymore. We might not see as many home runs. 
Uh, we might see averages go back up, OBP go back up, walks walks go up, strikeouts go down. Uh, so it's, it's going to be really interesting to see kind of how everything shakes out. I'm, I'm excited. Um, I, I kind of just want to see. Just, just get on the field, show me what it's going to look like. Other than that, um, just a kind of a fun fact. Uh, the, so if you haven't heard, the A's traded uh, Elvis Andrews to the Oakland A's for Chris Davis. And the last time that Elvis Andrews did, was not in a Texas Rangers opening day lineup, that team had Milton Bradley, Hank Blaylock, Kevin Millwood, Ben Broussard, and Eddie Gordado. That's a long time ago. Um, he's been with the A, uh, the Rangers. He was with the Rangers for 10 to 12 years, a really long time. Uh, he's been a keystone of that organization, a fan favorite. Uh, happy to have him in Oakland. Yes, I'm a Mariners fan of heart. I was raised in the Bay Area, however, as well. Uh, so I do know, I do love the Oakland A's as well. Uh, to recap some free agent signings, uh, you've probably been living under a rock if you haven't heard that Trevor Bauer signed with the LA Dodgers. Uh, and just some details on his contract. Um, the reason he chose the Dodgers over the Mets, well, he's a SoCal native. He went to UCLA. He's from Southern California. It's his hometown. However, that didn't really have much to do with it. Um, the Dodgers' advanced approach to metrics and his ability to market himself in LA was just that much better than what he could have done with the Mets in New York. Um, so, and the kickers to his deal, he has two opt-out options. So he can opt out after this season. He can opt out after the 2022 season as well. Uh, he'll make 40 million in 2021, assuming he opts in to, for 2022. He'll make 45 million. So you know the Dodgers will have to forfeit their second highest draft pick and $500,000 in international pool money. Uh, the Reds will gain a pick at the end of the first round. Uh, Marcelo Zuna re-signed with the Braves. Uh, Met signed infielder. Jonathan Villar, the Cardinals were able to officially re-sign Yadier Molina, uh, the Marlins signed Adam Duvall, the Mets also signed Albert Almora Jr., the A's re-signed Mike Fires, the Tigers signed Jonathan Sucka, the Rangers signed Mike Foley, Fulton Newitz, Colton Wong signed with the Brewers, Alex Colon signed with the Twins, the D-backs were able to sign Joaquin Soria, and the Phillies were able to sign Chase Anderson, and the Angels reach an agreement on a two-year extension with uh, pitcher D.A. Shohei Otani to avoid arbitration. On that, a couple of rumors that are floating around. Uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. is supposedly seeking a four-year deal. He's he's 31. He's an amazing defender. He still has it all there. The bat's still there. You know, it's never been great, but the defense is going to carry him into this next contract. Um, he'll most likely get like a two-year deal with a plus one maybe with his next contract. I ultimately think he's heading back to Boston. It's hard to see that he doesn't head back to Boston. Uh, I mentioned this at the top of the show, but the Oakland A's traded for uh, shortstop Elvis Andrews, catcher Aramis Garcia, and the Rangers in exchange at DH outfielder Chris Crush Davis, catcher jo Jonah Heim, and right-handed pitcher Dan Acker. Obviously, the headline of this trade is Andres for Davis. Obviously, it's not huge. Both of these guys have struggled the last couple seasons. Crush Davis hasn't been able to get back to his crushing like he had in recent memory. Um, and then the biggest, probably an even bigger part than, than Davis for the Rangers is Jonah Heim. Uh, he, has a, he now has a chance to earn an everyday role. In uh, his 41 plate appearances in 2020, he actually was able to earn really high praise from his pitching staff. And that pitching staff, remember, had Liam Hendricks, Wilk, jo Wilk, Joe Keem Soria, has Sean Manaya, and some other vet guys that have been around the game for a long time. Uh, he was able to earn really high praises for his ability to manage a game, frame pitches, um, and he should get every opportunity to earn an everyday role with the Rangers. Um, so Andrus, his new contract, the A's are getting... They're not only shedding $16.75 million in the Davis contract, they're also getting $13.25 million from the Rangers for Andrus. So that could be paid out over about $7.25 million over the next two seasons, or it could all be paid up front for his salary in 2021, which would only leave them on the hook for about a million. Uh, so we'll see. I would assume it's going to be broken up over the two seasons. 
uh, and now his option for his third year for 2023 turns into investing option for 15 million uh, should he get a combined 1100 plate appearances over the next two seasons. And then the only other notable trade was the Angels acquired twitching outfielder Dexter Fowler from the Cardinals for a player to be named later. The Angels are going to take on the whole salary, uh, 12.75 million from the Cardinals, so that was a strict, strictly a salary dump um, with the Arenado move and re-signing Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina. Not really many trade rumors to talk about. Um, oh, one that I do want to just kind of snub for everyone before you keep hearing it from everywhere else. Jose Ramirez, Indians aren't trading Jose Ramirez. I don't know why they would trade Jose Ramirez, a guy who's finished top three in the MVP voting three seasons straight now. I mean, the dude is just so good. He's still controllable for two more years. He's the best player on the team, and he's still... The, the Indians could still win the Central. I've been saying this for for weeks now, that the Indians still have a really good rotation. Um, Bieber, who just won the Cy Young, Zach Plesak, uh, Tristan McKenzie. Like, they still have a good rotation, a good team. They were able to re-sign Hernandez to play second. They still have Jose Ramirez. They got Ahmed Rosario and another shortstop, you know, just because they don't have Cookie and Lindor doesn't mean that they're they're a bad team all of a sudden. No, they've actually been able to make some moves, and if not, they might even be a little bit better without Lindor, without that drama and that, that in their rotation um, on the field. Yes, it hurts them, hurts defensively, but it might ultimately pay off being a better move uh, if you think about it. Uh, let's see, Ryan Braun, he did say he's not interested in playing right now. Um, he's enjoying his time with his family. He's focused on his business interests. Um, he's continued to stay in touch with the Brewers. Um, so it seems like he's a little bit, he's closer to retirement than he is to being on the field with the Brewers in 2021. So again, it's still early. There's still time this spring. Something could happen. They could make a call. They could be like, yo, Ryan, we want you back. Highly doubtful at this point, however, though. But... Other than that, before we jump over to the outfield fantasy baseball targets, I do just want to make a mention over at Rip Sports and say thank you to all of you. Thank you guys all so much for helping me hit 100 followers on Facebook, 100 followers on Instagram. I'm just super pumped about that. You know, a year ago when I started, I would have never thought I would have hit 100. So thank you guys so much for being with me. Keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. Um, but... I just wanted to take a chance to say thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, without any further ado, let's talk some fantasy baseball. All right, let's get back into some fantasy baseball. So, we all love fantasy baseball. We all are excited for it. It's the chess match of all fantasy sports. Fantasy basketball, fantasy football, those are easy compared to fantasy baseball. If you ever play fantasy baseball, you know that it is incredibly difficult. You have to... You know, you, you build your foundation in the draft just like any other fantasy sport, but you really have to be able to let players go and not be sad if they don't perform well for your team. Um, so, we're going to start with outfielders. My top two picks, tie for one and two, I don't know which order to put these guys in, Mookie Betts and Mike Trout. If you would have told me two, maybe three years ago that I was seriously thinking of considering Mookie Betts as a number one outfielder right next to Mike Trout, I'm like, it's a possibility, but it's highly doubtful. Uh, man, I would have been wrong. Both hit for average, OBP, power, they get you home runs, they get you RBIs, they both have talent around them. Uh, they're both in just a great position to succeed. Both these guys are worthy of a top three pick. Next, three and a four. Again, another two guys that are tied because they're both that good. Bryce Harper and Christian Yelich. I, I don't know how to separate these two. They both give you power, hits, home runs, RBIs. Um, Harper might give you a little bit more just because the Philadelphia offense is a little bit better overall than the Brewers. However, I think Yelich should be back and should have a great season in 2021 despite their struggles in 2020. 
Um, I would go for both these guys, you know, first round. If they fall to you later into the second, definitely scoop them up. Get them on your team. Um, fifth, Ronald Acuna Jr. This guy, he's, he's incredible. He's going to give you 20-20 at least, 20 home runs, 20 stolen bases. If not 30-30 and maybe even 40-40, which he was going for in 2020 before the shutdown in the shortened season. Um, if anyone can do it in the entire MLB, is Ronald Acuna Jr. Um, you know, just he's going to give you hits, average home runs, RBIs. He's going to get on base. He has Freddie Freeman, Ozzy Albies, Marcel Ozuna in that lineup with him, and he's just incredible. Marring any time missed with injuries like in 2020, um, Acuna is worthy of a first round pick, if not second. Uh, Cody Bellinger, George Springer, Juan Soto, Eloy Jimenez, Luis Robert round out my top 10. All these guys, you know, they're about a three through six kind of pick. Um, Three, four, actually, on it, honestly. Um, Juan Soto, he's someone that you can consider taking in the first or second. And then Eloy Jimenez, Luis Robert. This duo, I'm telling you guys, right now, if they're there at your second or third pick in the draft, get them because they're going to return on that value and they're going to be better than what you're getting them for. They're going to be an extreme value. They're going to be a steal at the draft. They fall to you in the second, third round. Scoop him up. Uh, Springer, same thing. He might fall just because of Springer, but with that offense in Toronto, the youth, the just the talent around him, I in the stardom that he has now, the driver's seat, he's been handed the keys to the Lambo and said, drive this team to the playoffs. I have Springer as the MVP of the AL East, honestly. I think he would be a great asset for your fantasy team. Um, some above average guys that you can look at, Jordan Alvarez in, you know, the fourth through seventh round maybe, Austin Meadows, same spot, uh, Kyle Lewis, Randy Rosarena, Fran Mil Reyes, Reyes, another few guys who are also going to get you hits, home runs, RBIs, average, who are going to get on base a lot, who are going to provide a value to your team and be really good whenever you put them into your lineup and you just don't have to worry about ever taking them out except if you need to switch games or whatever, but they're going to be good all year long. These next few are, are really interesting. Um, Aaron Judge, John Carlos Stanton. If they can remain healthy for 130 games for the Yankees each, man, you're talking about a duo that can hit 100 home runs and 200 RBIs in a full season and propel the Yankees straight to the World Series if they're healthy. That's a kicker, though, if they stay healthy. Um, you know, last year I was super happy with John Carlos Stanton until he got hurt, and then I just dropped him. Um, but when they're on the field, both these guys are so good. But, however, don't spend up in the draft for them. Let someone else take them earlier than the seventh round because um, that's going to happen. Name value, Yankees fans, they're in every league. There's going to be people who take name value over actual talent. Use that to your advantage to get a guy like Fran Reyes, Reyes or Randy Rosarino or even Kyle Lewis, Austin Meadows, Jordan Alvarez to get these guys a little bit later. We're going to be probably on the field more, um, provide you a better value that you can use a later pick to get. So just make sure you stay smart. Uh, Joey Gallo, you're going to get a lot of strikeouts. If your league counts strikeouts, maybe avoid Gallo. Uh, he's going to hurt your average. He's going to hurt your strikeout numbers. Uh, Starling Marte, that guy, you know, he gets on base a lot, high average. Not much else, but he won't hurt your team. Uh, Charlie Blackman, Michael Brantley, they, both these guys are, are old. They feel old in terms of fantasy. Um, I've had Blackman on my team for years. I love having Charlie Blackman. Uh, he's a beast. He's consistent. He gets you average RBIs. Save for Michael Brantley. Um, both these guys should be easy, you know, 10 through 12, 13 pick round-wise. Same for Marte. Um, another handful of guys that you could do worse with, Victor Robles, uh, David Dahl, Cattell Marte, Michael Conforto, Andrew Benintendi, Alex Verdugo, Ramon Loreno, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., J.D. Martinez, Mitch Hanniger, and Trey Mancini. Um... 
obviously all these guys, these are going to be your guys that you're going to select later in the middle of the draft, you know, probably rounds 13, 14, 15 or later to fill out your team. Uh, put on the back end of your bench. Take your chances with all of them, especially Mar J.D. Martinez, Mitch Hanniger, and Trey Mancini. All these guys are coming off of either injuries or really bad years. Um, but all three are really seriously talented players who are worth um, that are worth taking taking in the draft or picking up off of the waivers um, as you get into the season. Next, some guys that if you absolutely have to, or you auto drafted, which please don't be a victim of auto draft. Um, Austin Hayes, Dylan Carlson, Tyler O'Neill, Lorenzo Kane, Kyle Tucker, Justin Upton, are just another handful of guys that you can look at um, as you get into the draft. So those are my outfielders. Over on the website, I have a fantasy forum. Let me know who you guys are targeting in the outfield, who your favorite outfield target is. Um, and we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to talk about our short stops, who we got for our fantasy short stops in 2020. And right before break, I was talking, saying that we were going to talk short stops. I meant to say third baseman, um, but that's all right. So, some third baseman that I absolutely love for this fantasy season. Nolan Arenado. Love that he's with the Cardinals now. Absolutely loved it. I even loved him before the Cardinals trade. Um, Aaron Otto is the best third baseman in baseball. He's the best fantasy third baseman in baseball, hands down. Don't fight me because let me tell you why. He's going to give you 30 plus home runs, 90 plus RBIs, 95 plus runs, a 280 plus average. You know, there's going to be some leagues, if he's not a top five pick, he might fall to you late first, early second because of last year's injury and because of the trade to the Cardinals. However, the Cardinals have one of the best systems in baseball. He actually has some decent talent around him and like Dylan Carlson, Tyler O'Neill, Paul Goldschmidt, Yadier Molina. Um, you know, the Cardinals have a really good team. Paul DeYoung. Um, don't get Nolan Arenado on the first round, please. Whatever I do, whatever you do, if he's there, pick him up. Get him in the first round. He's a top five guy. Um, Jose Ramirez, next guy I absolutely love, and it's another guy, he's one of those guys that just falls like the second, third, fourth round sometimes, and it's mind-boggling because he's consistently one of the best players in baseball. With Nolan Dorr in Cleveland, Jose Ramirez is by far the best, second best option after Nolan Arenado at third base. You will not go wrong, he's going to give you about the same power numbers, average, things like that, but he's going to give you stolen bases. Um, and he should be just a great, great pick in the second or third round. Yes, I'm like a lot of you guys. I don't like drafting the Astros. I don't like drafting my AL West rivals or my Mariners, but fantasy baseball, you got to put those ceilings aside and you got to get who's going to get you win. Um, Alex Bregman, my number three third baseman. It's hard to say no. Um, with no Springer, with no J.J. Redick, with a young Kyle Tucker, um, with Correa, Altuve, him. You know, they're trying to go for maybe another shot, but they have no rotation. Not really anyone great in the bullpen. They haven't really made any moves this winter. But Bregman, you know, he's a guy who's going to give you maybe about 27 home runs, 87 RBIs, a high batting average. Sprinkle in some stolen base for bases here and there. You've got yourself a pretty solid third baseman who's, you know, just a really disciplined, good hitter as well. He doesn't strike out a lot. Next is going to be Mike Trout's uh, better half, Anthony Rendon. You know, he's not going to give you as much as Trout, but he's going to give you a great third base option. Um, another guy, just like Bregman, you might be able to get in the third through fifth round if you're lucky. Um, he's going to give you about 25 home runs, 85 runs, 85 RBIs, if not more, a high batting average. You can target him third, fourth round. Uh, Manny Machado comes in at fifth. He was a leader of the Slam Diego Padres last season. He was an MVP finalist. You know, he's he's just barely getting into his prime at like 29. Um, 
look for him to come out and hit about 35 home runs, 100 RBIs, 90 runs, 270 plus batting average around there. Um, depending on how your draft shakes out, Machado would be worth kind of reaching up for in the second, third round because he's going to give you great returns, especially with the moves that San Diego has made in the rotation, in the bullpen, in the lineup, in the field around him. I mean, you look at this Padres infield alone, Hosmer, Cronenworth, Tatis, him, third base. You put Haseon Kim in left, you have just loads of talent on that team. Next, they're going to be kind of next tier down. So those are about the tier one guys. Next, dropping down to tier two. You're looking at Rafael Devers, you know, another one of those guys who's primed for a really big year next to Verdugo post Benintendi trade. Um, 28 home runs, 90 RBIs, 270 ish batting average, possibly. Uh, he's on his way up to that top five spot. He is really close. A strong season this season is going to put him over that top to get him into the top five third baseman. We'll be talking about him next year in the top five for sure. Uh, Chris Bryant, yes, Chris Bryant. Speculation to trade. Cubs are a bad team. Whatever you want to say, they're just like the Indians. They have a, they still have a great offense. However, so the Indians have great pitching, but the the Cubs have great offense. They still have Rizzo, they still have Baez, they still have Contreras, they still have Hayward, they still have a, a good team. Um, yes, it's been a down season, but I, I don't see anything coming from, anything bad coming from the best, one of the best players in baseball. He's also due for free agency, you know he's trying to get that bag. So. I would expect him to get back to those MVP numbers, 280 average, 29 plus home runs, 90 plus RBIs, and an absolute value if you can get around the 5th, 6th round. Gio Urshela comes in at, uh, comes in at 8th on my list. Um, just another guy, you know, he, he's going to have some roster flexibility for you at shortstop third base. Same with Bryant, he might have some out, outfield flexibility for you. But I fully expect Ursula to actually stay on the field for the Yankees, unlike Stanton and Aaron Judge. Uh, so Ur Ursula, you can probably target him around the sixth, if not seventh round or later. Alec Bohm, rookie of the year finalist for the Phillies, showed up. He beats a shift. He's a shift. He's a shift beater. Um, he can hit to all all areas of the field, no matter what. He has no problem beating shifts and just being a great hitter. He's disciplined, he's patient, and he's really good. Um, with that Phillies lineup kind of reloaded with Didi, Real Muto, Harper, him, he has opportunities to drive runs in, get on base, and just be really comfortable at the plate again in 2021 without having to carry too much of the offensive pressure. Um, look for maybe about 25 plus home runs, 80 plus RBIs, 80 plus runs, and a 290 batting average. You know, he's another guy you might be able to snag a little bit later in drafts and maybe around the 8th, ninth round possibly, depending on how things shake out. Uh, Matt Chapman. Again, he's one of these guys that might go earlier, but don't get fooled because of the name. Yes, he's a big name for the Oakland A's. The Oakland A's are a great team. He's a great defender. Remember that. He's also really good with the bat. Don't get me wrong. He is. He seriously is. Um... I don't know what's going on there. Uh, he's great with the bat, and he might give you a lower batting average, but he can give you 30 plus home runs, 90 plus RBIs, 90 plus runs. If you can get your a couple guys with a slightly higher batting average and lower strikeout numbers, like a, like a Starling Marte in the outfield, someone like that, um, then that's kind of where you're able to get a guy like Matt Chapman. And a few guys that you might be sleeping on. Uh, Josh Donaldson, Eugenio Suarez, Yon Moncada, Cabrian Hayes, who I absolutely love um, going into the season in all regards, Miguel Sano and Kyle Seeger. These guys are all going to be about your 8th, 9th, 10th or later round third baseman. 
Um, if you're waiting on a third baseman because you're trying to spend up at other position, these are the guys you're going to want to target. And lastly, if you auto-drafted, you're probably getting stuck with someone like Eduardo Escobar, Justin Turner, Brian Anderson, Vlad, Gwer Vlad G. Jr., Avalon Goria, and Mike Moustakis. Out of that list, I would be excited for Brian Anderson. He almost made the cut to a top 16. However, I, I just didn't love him. I, I like the Marlins, but last year I... I almost feel like the 2020 season was an outlier. Yes, Mattingly is a genius. Whatever he did to get them to the playoffs worked, and they're going to do it again. However, I don't, I just don't love, I, I just don't love the Marlins. I've actually dropped on them. I'm not as high on them. They haven't made any moves to really com compete, um, to stay up in the NL East, which is definitely winnable. Um... So we'll we'll kind of see what happens. I'm not I'm not banking on them, but we'll see. Um, and again, you know, a guy like Brian Anderson, Vlad G, Mike Moustakis, those guys are going to give you some roster flexibility, as well as like a Miguel Sano at, at first base, third base. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what you're looking at for third base. So um, let's talk about the present and future of the AL West right after this. All right, to wrap this thing up, we're going to talk about the present and future of the AL West. So just to kind of break this down real quick for everyone, I break the players down into three categories. Obviously, the most, the first one's the most exciting players. Guys who I am just absolutely in love with, who I think are on their way to complete and absolute superstardom in the MLB. The next are guys who are on their way. These are well-established players who are just phenomenal, who are no doubt just the best players in baseball right now who are quite possibly if they continue on their way to the Hall of Fame. Um, and lastly, it's the Hall of Fame players, guys who were 100% locked and loaded Hall of Fame um, ballot players who are going to get in probably. Um, so the AOS is completely loaded, so I'm just going to throw out names mostly. Um, I'll break down some players along the way. Um, but a lot of these guys you might notice a crossover in with fantasy baseball. Ramon Moreno, uh, outfielder, athletics. You know he's just he's a great fielder. Um, in 1,800 innings plus, he runs a 9.86 fielding percentage with eight errors and 13 defensive runs saved. He's phenomenal. He has a 7.4 career WAR with a slash line of 270, 343, 475. He's 26. The A's are in love with him. He has a cannon for an arm. He's absolutely phenomenal, and Ramon Moreno is fantastic. Kyle Lewis, Rookie of the Year 2020. I don't need to say any more about him. Um, the story's there. He's a fantastic athlete. He hits for power. He gets on base. And he's a new cornerstone of the Seattle Mariners. Uh, a couple more Mariners, Evan White, J.P. Crawford. Both these guys are gold glove players. The bats are coming around for both of them, and expect to see them on the field with the Mariners for a long time. Um, outfielder Kyle, Kyle Tucker of the Astros. He's 23. He just came off his first full season. 2020 is 60 games, so it's hard to tell. Um, but he had posted a 1.9 war, which is pretty dang good. Um, especially with no Springer or Reddick. They're going to need Tucker more than ever to supply some offense. Along with Tucker with the Astros, you get Jordan Alvarez, DH. Um, he only took eight at bats in 2020, but um, he won the 2019 Rookie of the Year. The 23-year-old DH outfielder is looking to reestablish himself in the in the lineup on the team, reestablish his health, and show them why he won the Rookie of the Year in 2019. Shohei Otani of the Angels, another one of those guys that's just awesome. Um, I don't see Otani. I see Otani hopefully transitioning to the outfield with the Angels. That's the hope. That's the dream. I'm really hoping, but I doubt it'll happen. But I'm really excited. Um, I think I think the talent's there, obviously. But he's he's fast. He can hit. He hit for power. He has a great, pretty swing. He's he's like a power slap hitter, if that makes sense. Ichiro, you saw him when he was on the field. He's a slap hitter. Otani's also a slap hitter, but he hits for more power, if that makes any sense. And then lastly, a couple of guys on the Rangers who I'm excited for: uh, Joey Gallo and Isaiah Kinner Falafan. 
Um, both these guys play great gold glove level defense, Plata in general. He won the gold glove at third base in 2020, which is incredibly hard to do, especially in the AL West, but especially in the AL in general with so many great third basemen at the position all around. Um, Gallo, if he could stop striking out so much, he would be on another level of hitter. Um, Joey Gallo is fantastic. I think both these guys have a bright future, and hopefully they can get Gallo out of Texas because um, he deserves to have a great career somewhere. Some guys who are on their way. Um, Anthony Rendon, Angels, you know, this guy, he's a all-star, one-time all-star, two-time silver slugger, 2019 World Series champion. How he's not more than an all-star beats me, uh, mostly because he was in the NL with Nolan Arenado, and that's going to do it. Uh, but he's a career 293, 72, 490 hitter with 31.2 war. I mean, it's, it's hard to say anything bad about him. Uh, coming off his first full season as an Angel, we'll look for him to get into, you know, six years. He'll be great. He'll end up being one of the Angel greats next to Mike Trout. Hopefully, these two can win a World Series together. Uh, Matt Chapman, third baseman, in athletics. I mean, he already owns two gold gloves. Two platinum gloves and he's a one time all star and he's only 27. 21 career war, career 255, 336, 503 slash. If he can bring the strikeouts down, he's a lock. He's so good. He's still so young. Uh, Alex Bregman, another 27 year old third baseman. He's one of the best in, uh, third baseman in the MLB. 23.4 war, 283, 381, 521 hitter in his 2,418 plate appearances. He's also an above average defender with a 966 fielding percentage with 15 defensive runs saved. Um, you know, he's coming into his sixth season. Um, he has three more years with the Astros. I, I absolutely think Bregman is going to be one of the best players in the game, especially at third base. Uh, Carlo Correa, he's coming into his last year, but, you know, 2012 number overall pick have lived up to every expectation set for him along the way. He's a 26.3 career war, 276, 353, 480 slash line. He's only appeared in one All-Star game, won the Rookie Year of the Year, and was part of the 2017 World Series winning Astros with the Asterix. Yes, I added that Asterix in on myself. Um, you know, a couple guys that are just honorable mentions. Jose Altuve. The only reason I'm going to say Jose Altuve is an honorable mention. One MVP, one World Series champion, six-time All-Star, five-time Silver Slugger, one Gold Glove, one Hank Aaron Award, all earned before turning 30. However, the sign ceiling scandal, the way the writers are with this death, it's hard for me to realistically see Altuve getting into the Hall of Fame despite his accomplishments. I mean, look at Schilling, look at Bonds, look at um, Clemens, Sosa, these guys who cheated um, in one way or another or didn't cheat or implicated and how the, the deep ties to it are going to be the guys who get punished um, despite no matter how great your career is. Um, the riders, I mean, granted he probably has another four, seven more years on the field, who knows. Um, he's still super young, he's 29. Um, with a career slash of 311, 361, 458, 36.5 wins above replacement. Altuve can realistically still get into the Hall of Fame. I don't think he can, um, but the science and scandal is going to hurt him. Another guy, Justin Upton, the 33-year-old, formal number one overall pick in 2005. 14 years so far, he's a 33.9 career war. 307 home runs, 959 RBIs, with a career slash of 265, 345, 474. He's a four-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger. He's never been an elite Hall of Famer, but he's helped him win a lot of games. He's helped be a winner on that Angels team, um, and he's done it for a long time. The longevity helps. And then some future Hall of Fame hitters. Oh, I'm Mike Trout, 29 years old, three-time MVP, eight-time All-Star, Silver, eight-time Silver Slugger. Um, Wilson Defensive Player of the Year, two-time Hank Aaron Award winner, two-time All-Star MVP. Um, he has a 12-year contract that keeps him in L.A. until he's 39. Career 76.4 war already. I think 302 home runs, almost 800 RBIs, 
305-418-582 slash. I, I don't even know why I keep talking about him. He's the best. Uh, next is Albert Pujols. Yes, he's going to make it into the Hall of Fame. No doubt. Three-time MVP, Rookie of the Year, 10-time All-Star, two-time World Series champ, two-times Gold Glover, six-time Silver Slugger, one batting title, three-time Major League Player of the Year, NLCS MVP, 662 home runs, 2,100 RBIs, 100.7 wins above replacement, 299, 377, 546, with 1,331 career walks as well. well. That's a lot. Um, he's done in the AL and the NL for 20 years. He's entering the final season of his career, presumably. And man, oh man, you can't say enough great things about Albert Pujols. Talk about some pitchers. Um, Justice Sheffield, Roberto Azuna, Christian Javier, and Dane Dunning. These guys are, are my favorites right now. Um, who are just absolutely phenomenal. Justice Sheffield, um, he had a great, he put together a great 2020 season. 0 0.8 wins above replacement. 358 ERA, 3.17 FIP. 48 strikeouts to 20 walks and 55.1 innings pitched. He's he's there. He's ready. He's ready to dominate next to Marco Gonzalez in this rotation. Um, Roberto Zuna, he's actually a free agent, so I'm not. I don't want to dig too much into him. However, he's come back from that domestic violence case really strong in his career. Um, he's 25 years old, and he has so much time ahead of him. He already has um, just an incredible resume: 274, 2.74 ERA, 276 FIP. It's rare that you get something that close for an ERA FIP. Um, 348K is to 55 walks or 350 innings pitch. Um, I can't say enough good things about Azuna. I hope he gets a chance. Christian Javier, he was he was a saving grace for the Astros rotation in 2020. He finished third in the Rookie of the Year voting. He posted a 1.3 WAR, 5-2 record, 3.48 ERA with a 4.94 FIP. 54 strikeouts to 18 walks or 54.1 innings pitch. The 23 year old is ready to step into the top of the rotation once Justin Verlander and Granke decide to hang it up, which could be at the end of this year um, or if they leave town. Lastly, Dane Dunning, the new addition for the Rangers um, in the Luke Lance Lynn trade, had to put, put together a good season. A few other guys, and I'm kind of waiting to see what happens. Uh, Mariners pitcher Justin Dunn and Athletics pitchers Jesus Lizardo and AJ Puck. A uh, guy that's on his way, uh, Corey Kluber. He's he's done it. He's good. Um, he's he's earned two Cy Young awards, an ERA title, three-time All Star. If he can rebound from not twenty pitching in twenty twenty, and he can do something with the Yankees, I believe that's who signed him. Um, and then I have no doubt that Kluber has a legitimate shot in getting into the Hall of Fame. Lastly, two Hall of Fame pitchers, both among the Astros, I'm sure you can guess. JV, the 16-year vet, one MVP, two Cy Young Awards, a Rookie of the Year, a Triple Crown, an ERA title, ALCS MVP, Major League Player of the Year, 2017 World Series champion, Asterix, and an eight-time All-Star. Career 71.8 WAR, 226, 129 record, 3,013 strikeouts, 851 walks. Career 333 ERA, 341 FIP. Um, he's been a top 11 Cy Young vote getter seven times in his career, and he's never he's finished no more than 20th in the MVP voting six times. Um, he's coming. He's working his way back from uh, Tommy John surgery. We'll see if and what he has left in the tank coming into the 2021 season. And lastly, Zach Greinke. Greinke's also been one of the best to ever take the mound. One Cy Young, six Gold Gloves, two Silver Sluggers from winners in the NL. Uh, two ERA titles, six All-Star appearances, a career 72.2 war, 337, 337 FIP, uh, 2,689 strikeouts to 676 walks, over 29. 2,939 innings pitched. Just another just incredible career. Both these guys have done it for more than a decade, decade and a half, and 
no doubt that both these guys are getting into the Hall of Fame. But that's it. That's all we got for today, guys. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks for joining me on YouTube. Thanks for joining me on whatever uh, podcast platform you're listening to. I do appreciate it. I appreciate the support. Um, please come over to the website. Talk to me in the fantasy forum. I love interacting with you guys. It's so much fun. It's a lot of fun for me. So please come over, talk to me, let me know who you got for fantasy baseball, who you're most excited about to see in 2020, what players you got on your mind. Talk to me in the forums. Um, you know, read through some content, go back, read through some content. All the yearly reviews are up. Yearly previews start in March. Um, division breakdowns are coming uh, to start spring training. More fantasy baseball. There's so much content coming. It, it's great. It's awesome. I love it. Um, but seriously, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure you share the podcast with a friend. Make sure you share the YouTube. Make sure you share the Facebook, the Instagram, the Twitter, the TikTok, everything. Uh, share it with someone you love that loves baseball. Show them that you care. Um, and as always, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. One love, blessings, and until next time.